I do love uh, chocolate and coffee. Yep. Okay. As part of the Yacht Master, we are looking at passage planning today. And the first stage of passage planning on board this boat, <laughs> using a ferry, is getting information. Oh, there's so many different sources of information. And uh, what we like is using a variety of different sources rather than just one source. Uh, because that gives you, paints a better picture as to the kind of places you're going to go. Um, whereas just one source, um, you know, you only find this information and that's it. And, you know, whereas I like a lot of different places. So we've got lots of sources to show you. Now, our little mascots here mm. are representing something we can't put on the table. And that something is local sailors. Mm. Local sailors are a good source of local knowledge because they sail here all the time. They know the area intimately. They know it well. They know all the shortcuts and they know what's safe and what isn't safe. They know the things that people won't dare put in books. <laughs> so one of the things we have done is we've talked to a lot of local sailors while we're here. And we've recently attended a talk and they've given us more information. And before we leave, we'll get yet more from other people. Um, we like joining Facebook groups. Um, because that gets you in contact with uh, local people who know their areas very well. Mm. So, uh, as I say, Facebook groups are really good for getting additional information um, on top of um, the um, sources of information we're going to talk about today. All right, so what we've got in front of you, uh, we'll go through them so you don't have to straight and get close to the um, screen. <laughs> is sources of information that we use on board the boat mm -hmm. and as you can see there are quite a number of them um so if we start over there that would be a good place all right this is the most obvious source of information that people look up and it's the good old chart and we've recently spent a tiny fortune definitely a tiny fortune <laughs> buying basically all the charts we need to cover the whole of our cruising range for the year um this was about 100 quid's worth now, people say, why do you get paper charts? Well, we've got electronic charts anyway. We've got them up in the binnacle. We've got them in a little chart plotter here. We've got them on our little tablet. Yeah, we've got them on our tablet as well. Yeah, so we've got lots of electronic charts. But what happens if something goes wrong? When people say, oh, well, you'll never lose GPS. Maybe we won't. We could lose power on board the boat. That's definitely true, because we have had that. Um... We've had power issues on the boat before. <laughs> So we could lose power on the boat, and if we lose power on the boat, all the electronics switch off. Oh, I've got my telephone. Yes, you have. And after about four or five hours, you'll have used its battery up. Mm. So you're not at sea, with no batteries, no power. What do you do? Get back to this. Uh, the other good thing about uh, paper charts is somehow or other, they give you a much better feel of yes. where you're going. Uh, the electronic charts are great at um, getting you... They're great at what they do. They are great at what they do. And they're great um, at detail. And they're great at the detail. Um, so I do like my electronic charts. But they, but they don't let you... The electronic charts really don't let you get take a big area like this mm. and poke around in it. Yeah, and sort of like start looking at different places and give you a better feel as to how long it's going to take you to do a particular passage. Um, yes, the electronic charts do that. Well, hi there. <laughs> yes, the electronic charts uh, allow you to um, map out um distances and stuff like that but really when you're doing your research sitting around this with this spread out on the table it's a great conversation piece um you can point and say look at this look at that look at the other take as long as you want to for it it's it's, mm. it's this particular set here also has all the tidal information already on it things like that and that helps now when we're doing this we still use the electronic charts oh absolutely and what we do is when we're looking at this, we look at an area and then we zoom in on this and have a look at it close up. So mm. this is like our overview and this is like our detail view. It certainly is. I'll put that back over there. Um, in this particular neck of the woods, tides are a thing. Yeah, tides are very important. Um, you've got a lot more tidal 
areas and tidal flows to thinking about and also the heights now obviously we initially we're in Liverpool and it's not unknown to have a 10 meter tide in Liverpool 10.4 was the most I ever recorded there uh, or saw when I was there so that's a lot of tide and that can change um, six hours that you know the, how much water you have underneath you in six hours now that's an extreme case for this area um, I mean here in Bangor the tide height is about four meters yeah so it's four meters of tide here so and, and we have been here at four meters we've been here when the four meter mark on the wall has been covered up yeah so um, that's the tide here different places have different tides so it is a very important factor and some places have what we call tidal gates and that means that you can only get in to a particular place at a particular time so you really do need when that know when the high water is so that you can get in um, to a particular place yes like for example Conway in, we in North Wales it has a tidal gate and uh, the tidal gate is I think plus or minus three hours or plus or minus two hours it's plus or minus three for uh, plus Conway. or minus three hours of high tide so if you're arriving at Conway you must arrive either three hours before or three hours after high tide or else you don't get in mm. so you know things like that now one of the sources of information for that is you can buy a small set of tide tables like these which just give the tides for every day of the year in a particular area and this is the RC area and it was last year's tide table 2019. Um, you can also buy these little debris which are quite useful actually we used this one in Scotland yeah uh, last year and this one is for 2019 and 2020 and this one here is for 2020 and 2021 and it's got all the days of the year and the days have little letter codes on them and you set the letter code up here twirl the wheel round until it matches up with the colour of the area you're in and it tells you what the tide state is so it's a little quick it doesn't tell you how high it gets it just tells you what it is high tide low tide it can be useful it's not perfect um the ultimate oh, lordy <laughs> The ultimate thing for somewhere like this is Reed's Nautical Almanac and this has got all the tide information for basically the whole of Western Europe. Um, now um, for 2020. Yeah this is only valid for one year now we got away with um, last year using an almanac which was four years out of date. Yes 2016. So um, but the tidal information when you're using an old almanac is not correct it's, the ports don't really change that much the contact information doesn't change that much so it's good for that but the tidal information is rubbish when you uh, yes I mean, about... a book like this will have information about like about information about tidal streams it will have marina layouts and things like that it will have important approach information such as the frequencies to contact the harbour master on uh, whether the place is gated with the tidal gate like Conway and if so when is the drop time for the flaps mm. so that information generally stays up to date although the tidal information shown here generally doesn't because once 2020 is gone this is all historic but like Beverly says um, you can buy um, a small uh, tidal information book Reads all for Mac. the year Reads all Mac 50 quid little tidal thing two pounds yeah um the reason we decided to get the big almanac this year uh was um we decided we needed a new almanac because uh, ours was four years out of date um and we could either spend 10 pounds more on that one and it cover quite a lot of europe which will be our next grounds um or just get the grounds we were interested in so we thought we might as well buy that now because we'll only buy one every four or five years it's not an all it's not an every year purchase for us no it's not now well, and uh <laughs> keeping it real we're keeping <laughs> sword jorge um has been raging outside last night it was very bouncy in here last night we thought we were over the worst of it but it sounds like some of it's just come back yeah uh, right moving onwards um we alluded earlier to local knowledge and local sailors and finding out things that people know and that's where our other major source of information comes in which is 
pilot guides. And these, these, these books, which you can buy in any Chandler's, are generally collected knowledge of a local group of sailors who have sealed this area and know all the anchorages, all the passages, all the little shortcuts, all the little tricks, and they've put it into a book for you. They're not necessarily the cheapest things in the world, but they're not mega expensive either. We did actually uh, buy uh, the Irish Sea Pilot. Um, however, uh, these three um, books, one of them we got second hand in a Chandler's. Yes, this, this, um, this one here we got for like two pounds in Largs Chandlery. Yeah. Because it's, it's an oldish book, but the rocks don't move. <laughs> no, they don't move. Um, we were given two from um, one of our subscribers um and uh, this one we did buy but when we do get some uh, local knowledge then um and this is for local knowledge for strangford strangford lock and we just stick it in the book so um we do gather additional local knowledge on to what um the pilot guides do but this is really good on telling you anchorages reads gives you good information on the harbours and things like that but if you want to anchor out which is basically what we want to do pilot guides are your friend i think reads is also intended at more than just um small yachts i think it's also intended for slightly larger boats as well um it's very much oriented on approaching a place getting into the harbour or getting into the marina what the passages for the voyage on entry what the harbour master's frequencies are the phone numbers to call up to get in contact but this is oriented much more on how somebody, somebody who's like us yeah who's on a small uh, yacht and they want to anchor out because um we alluded to it last year because we uh, were in marinas a lot last year and you know, you're paying sort of like 30 to 40, 35 pounds a night. You can be, yes. Um, for this air, for these cruising areas. Well, that's just not sustainable if you're living on your boat. Mm. Um, so, whereas an anchor costs you nothing. Uh, yes, you do need good anchoring uh, equipment, but, um, you know, it costs you nothing to anchor out. And the other advantage of a book like this over reads is that it gives you photographs of the places you're going to go. So you can see it from above. You can get an aerial view, which is all I find very, very useful. Yeah. Um, also, if you do uh, get uh, aerial views, uh, one of the things I like is sometimes you can actually see how deep somewhere is um, and you get good at re being able to read the bed um just by looking at photographs and things like that so you can get that uh, information of that like that from the it. other thing i find is when i look at chartlets in these books i can look at passages and think wow that looks really really tight and then i look at the photograph of it and if there's a yacht in it so much the better that's i love that <laughs> and you think to yourself it's not as tight as it looks that looks a lot wider in reality than what what i thought it was going to be on the chart yeah i agree with beverly on that um uh Although there is uh, scale on all of these things, uh, we're still getting to grips with um, scale and knowing exactly what our boat can go through and things like that. Um, now, once we start gathering all this information, we then use our passage pa planning book. Um, and what we use our passage planning book for is giving ourselves rough views as to where we can go, what we can do, options. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we'll cover that, the production of this, in a later video. Yeah. In general, sources of information are charts. For a large area of view. Um, your reads almanac. Mm -hmm. um, tidal information pilot passage books, electronic charts, um, and people. People are a great source of information.